very interested in because it's slowly becoming more of a thing that a lot of the plantation houses are actually discussing you know mm. all of the all of the people that lived on the site yes. not just the kind of romanticized white family that lived there it's about everyone that kind of grew up on the first day off um, yeah, you know, thank you house was built in 1815 by a man named archibald Frew. Mm. we don't know a whole lot about mr Frew. we know mm. that he came down here from the north probably the philadelphia area mm. but he was registered here in charlotte in the early 1800s as a shopkeeper he was on oh, the wow. census and he eventually went on to become postmaster and tax collector for the city of Charlotte. Okay. Okay. Mm. Which means he was not a very popular man with the Scots Irish <laughs> community that lived here at the time. Yeah. Uh, at a time when most of the homes in this area were one or two room log cabins painted brown or red, he built this enormous show place of the house, mm. painted in very expensive colors. The yellow trim that you see outside was Paris or chromium yellow. That's our modern rendition. Okay. But at the time, uh, yellow was one of the first synthetic colors to be produced. It was uh, came in from Paris in 1814. Wow. And the house was built in a style called federal tripartite. Mm -hmm. Federal is the architectural style, of course, and then tripartite, you see the three separate sections that we have. And we think that there were two different architects for the house. We believe okay. that one designed the outside of the home and one designed the inside. So as you're walking through, you can look and see where some of the features mm -hmm. seem to be out of kilter or in the wrong place. Yeah. And we think that's the reason why. Notice why some of the size of the rooms as well. Yes. Yes. Basements and doorways. Yeah. Yes. And um, this, of course, was the Great Hall. Okay. This is where they would have had large family gatherings and social functions, and they also had wakes and funerals. In oh, this I knew this one. Yeah. Wow. You'll notice that door. Mm. You'll see it's much wider than oh, the other doors okay. in there. The reason is it had to be made wide enough to accommodate a coffin. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. yes. Wow. Yes. You have to go to the coffin door. Here's so, also um, an example of what I think it's actually a, 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 a. We think that that may have been the actual walking. Yes, yeah, so this would have been the style of the, eight, the early 1800s. Yes. Um, there's kind of exotic themes, these exotic themes that are put, and there will be panels, one on each wall. Unfortunately, because of the plaster we have right now, it wasn't kind of able to respond yeah. because it retained too much water. So right. we do have some original wallpaper upstairs. Okay. So that's managed to be restored. Which yes. Was amazing. Um, well, as I said, the neighbors called the house Fruits Folly because, yeah, because they thought it was such a lavish house and eventually bankrupt Mr. Fru. Uh -huh. As it turned out, they were correct. Oh. The method of tax collecting back in that day was that you were given a quota of money by the government that you had to collect uh -huh. and turn in. And okay. Then it was up to you to go out and shake down your neighbors for as much as you could get. Wow. If you got in more than the tax quota, you got to keep it. That's how tax collectors uh -huh. made their money. If you wow. got in less, however, then it was up to you to make up the difference out of your own pocket. Hmm. And so after one particularly bad summer when crops failed, Fru could not pay the taxes and he did go bankrupt. Oh. So he was fortunate, however, to be related by marriage to North Carolina State Senator William Davidson. You may have seen Davidson as a big name in this area. Okay. And Senator Davidson stepped in, purchased the home, saved it from foreclosure, and allowed the family to continue living here. Okay. Uh, we don't know how much longer the family lived here after that time. Fru actually died under, under mysterious circumstances in 1823. He's about oh, 40-something, wow. Yeah. wow it's speculated he may have committed suicide due to his financial circumstances, but we don't know that for certain. We do know, however, that he died, interestingly enough, on April 15th. April 15th. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 You're also know when he <laughs> Yes, we have no idea so he what he was wearing. He wasn't buried in the family, which led us to assume that maybe something a yeah. little bit nefarious went on to the ground about circumstances of his wow. death. And we have no graves on the property. There's yes. been no graves oh, okay. on the lot on the property. Yeah, most of the family's buried either at Sugar Creek or Settler Cemetery, which is our big cemetery uptown. Well, after Fru passed away, okay. The house remained in Senator Davidson's ownership, and in 1833, Senator Davidson's daughter, Harriet, married Dr. David Caldwell, and the, the senator sold them the home and reduced rate as a wedding present. Okay. The Caldwell family moved in, established a medical practice here, and they went on to have eight children, four boys and four girls. And leading into that, so a lot of people asked about the furnishings in the home. We don't have much left from when the Caldwells first lived here, except... Mm -hmm. If you want to talk about those, you probably know more than I do. <laughs> You've been here a lot, a lot longer. Well, those andirons in the fireplace were made by Nat on the blacksmith shop that once stood on the property. And the blacksmith shop we have now is just a reconstruction. It's not in the exact same spot. And it's yeah. not exactly the way it would have been, but it is a working blacksmith. And those andirons were made by Nat himself. And as we Laura mentioned earlier, we mentioned earlier, 
now it was hired out into the community and it got to the point where he was making more money as a blacksmith than Dr. Caldwell was as a doctor. Mm -hmm. Wow. But of course, Matt was enslaved on this plantation. Oh, okay. Yes, he was. And we, um, an interesting family story, and I will say, much of the story we've gotten, or the information we've gotten about the family and the enslaved are from descendants of the enslaved that still live in the area. They okay. maintain the oral traditions. And one family story we have, or we know part of it to be true from documentation, um, Dr. Caldwell, this is the part we're not sure about, he had either inherited that or purchased that, we're not entirely sure how much, okay. but we do know that a few years later, Dr. Caldwell purchased Nat's wife and children and bought the family together. Here is the attic, and we know that they, um, they probably entertained, or at least this was a school for the girls, was the the girls school because of the, the walls and the ceiling was plastered, which you probably would do unless you were, you yeah. know, finishing a room. Yes, yeah. finishing a room. And if you see the cover of the walls here, mm. this is what, this is kind of the oxidized version of the cover downstairs. Mm. So this, kind of, oh. this is original paint. Yes. Oh, this is original paint? Yes. And it yeah. have originally been that blue paint that you saw downstairs, but yeah, as Laura was saying, it had oxidized over the years, and that's why it's green. Wow. Very cool. And yes. The home had actually been a private residence since the 1980s, the 1980s. Mm. It had actually been in the Caldwell and Davidson families for almost 200 years. So in the 1980s, the last two members of the family to live here were the Davidson sisters, Mary Louise and her sister Alice. And they wanted to make sure that the house was not torn down to make way for apartment complexes and shopping malls for all the hesitancy to do that, sadly. Mm -hmm. So they sold the home to a historical foundation for $250,000 as opposed to the $2 million they could have gotten from a developer. Yes. Oh, wow. They, um, so we restored the home to the early 1800s, started giving tours in 1993, and they gave me tours ever since. And these are some of the family photos, because again, this is Louise Hay. That's Louise Hay Davidson. Yes. Um, so you can tell more, who's the little girl with... That Jasmine is Mary Louise. Louise. Mary so Louise. that gentleman there... And here's yeah, the yeah, 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 that's a copy. Yeah, these copies. There's, um, that gentleman there is very, uh, was a very important person here in the home. That gentleman is named Albert Shands. And Mr. Shands served as the caretaker here during the early and mid-1900s. Now, he, he had not been enslaved here. He actually came here from the low country of South Carolina. He was Gullah. Are you familiar with the Gullah culture? The Gullah are um, descendants of the enslaved that were on the low country, like the Charleston area of South Carolina. And they were a mix of the African and Dutch and English. And they have their own, they still today have their own culture, their own language, and it's fascinating. So we believe Elbert was Gullah, and he was known as the Conjure Man, because he was very well versed in herbal lore and knowledge. And people would come from miles around to get his opinion, get him to make potions, you know, concoctions yeah. for them. He was very, very well respected. Mm -hmm. What's the ghost story of this house? Yes, the, so the story is that when the house was being renovated during the um, 1980s, mm -hmm. workmen would try to keep their tools okay. in that little cubby. They would come back the next day and find the cubby door still shut, but their yeah. tools will be scattered all over the place. Interesting. Yeah, the, the house is haunted. We have a, sure, yes. yeah, we have a thriving haunted history. Oh, yes. So, yes. As you noticed, yeah. it's not connected to the oh, house. Why is that? External doors, if you notice in each room had an external door. Yeah. So that could have been one of two reasons. One could really just be a fire hazard, obviously. Oh, you fire. Didn't have a privatized, or yeah. not a private, but you know, had a fire oh, wow. hazard. Oh, wow. Um, so oh, this they is would beautiful. Have to get out quickly. Yeah, this is my favorite part of the house. Yeah, it's another reason could wow. probably was the social, um, the social kind of not etiquette, but the enslaved were not allowed to um, go through the internal thresholds of the house. Mm -hmm. So if one, if someone needed help in one room, they would have to jump outside the house, go around, and come back in. And there was bells attached to the different. Um, in, in the different rooms that were then had different tones so you would know which room needed required interesting or, oh, depending okay. but yeah this is this is the basement the, uh, it's a Europe like a British English style yeah, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. yes yes um and yeah as Cher mentioned earlier this is one of the reasons why it's considered oh did you mention why about the fruit folly yes yes obviously because um People thought that this would just set his house on fire because we obviously had two fireplaces here. Mm -hmm. And we know that the central one here was used for cooking mm -hmm. and this one over here was used for laundry. The reason we know that is when they were going through kind of the restoration um, of the house, they did chemical tests 
I found that there was cleaning chemicals in here and food residue oh, in this okay. thing. Oh. So is that a bathtub there? Yes. <laughs> well, we've had varying <laughs> stories about that. Um, we have been told that it was a bathtub belonging to Baxter, mm. but then I had a person on one of my tours who had worked as a butcher, and he said it was a hog slaughtering trough. Oh. oh. So, yeah. So, because either would kind of make sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, well, this is one of my favorite ones um, here. Oh, yeah. is this would be an airing one where you, if you couldn't <laughs> dry the sheets outside, you use the water oh, for the fireplace. Oh, that's, that's a great great idea. idea. I know. Wow. Like, wow. Actually, the Amish still make those. And yes. So I might be one of those. Yeah, like, so. yeah. <laughs> yes. So this is here. Yeah. This was the root cellar, and I always love showing this, especially oh. on my like, ghost tours. I don't know if you've ever seen this. I've heard it. it. Yeah, so let me see if I can get it open. Because it was on a root cellar and it was used for storage, but it takes this great. <laughs> oh. Definitely sounds well, like a haunted house. house. <laughs> <laughs> but they, yes, they use that for uh, selling the root storage and food storage because it stays at pretty constant temperature down here yeah. mm -hmm. in, the, in the winter and summer. So, so you notice know, the floors, they are a brick. Um, this would They wouldn't have had a floor like this. Okay. Um, they would have, it would have just been dirt. Um, oh. but we actually, these are actually the bricks from the fireplaces upstairs because oh, on the, yes, yeah, so in the restoration, the chimneys, yeah. okay. the chimneys, they couldn't be, they weren't up to code because they were kind of too malleable. So they actually brought them down and laid the floor and we know that they're actually, uh, they're actually made by the enslaved on the property. Yes. They? Because if you see, um, these two in particular we've taken out, you can see fingerprints. Mm -hmm. In the bricks. Yes. From where they were molded. Oh. From where they were molded. Yeah. So you can see like see. here and then this one kind of here. Wow. Yeah, we have to get a little display case for those. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's I guess cool. the process you, of yeah. things mm -hmm. and renovating. One of the things I try and get my group where I bring people down to if they can spot any more that have any of Yes, I have fingerprints in. Another one that I never thought, like, I was like, how did they get them out here? And then they would just have a uh, oh. stick and then it would just swing back. Did you know too, Laura, about the oven back there? I have, did we tell you about that? So, if you look back here at this flat stone, mm -hmm. you can see it's got a notch at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Originally, that area behind the fireplace was hollow, and it served as the oven, the baking oven. So, oh. they could go and pull that stone out, put a bread or cake or pie in there, and put the stone in and let it bake, and then they were when they were through, they could pull it back out. Very cool. Wow, that's very... So, that was where they did the baking. We're missing... Yeah, because it's not as deep as the wall is, so that makes sense. Yeah, this, wow. This so, is great. So, like, how many slaves would there be uh, in We this think plantation? that the Caldwell's probably had about 30 members of the enslaved on this property. Okay. I think yeah. at any one time, I think the most it had was... Because this wasn't um, a cash crop plant. Yeah, it was ah, just a farm. Okay. It was called a subsistence. Yeah, it was considered a subsistence. I mean, um, Dr. Caldwell refers to it as a plantation in his notes, but it probably would have been more kind of connected to like the social status yeah. you would have from owning a plantation for a white man back then. Yeah. Oh. The Laura Plantation is part of our history. Mm -hmm. yeah. My grandma Gross went back to the Laura Plantation, um, you know, to do the tour that yeah. she grew up on. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, they kind of drilled her on information. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was her, you know, that's yeah. the type of thing we're really wanting to know as well. Mm. Yeah. And, and so I'm trying to find more information about her mother, who was also born on the Laura Plantation. Mm -hmm. Talu is what mm -hmm. they called her. Oh, my goodness. Um, but yeah, so um, my, my family's last name is Gross. That was one of the uh, names from that plantation of ours. Wow. Mm. That's one place I have a lot of written there. history there. Mm -hmm. A lot of written history. So um, the uh, lady of the plantation uh, kept memoirs mm -hmm. and documented my great grandfather's and things that happened. Because he mm. kept running away. He was like, I'm not staying here. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's why they branded him. Oh, oh, oh because he ran away. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And then he yeah. had a son named um, Edward who then fought in the Civil War. Wow. And so all of this stuff is documented and it's like, oh, it's so good to be able to read this stuff yes. and see it. Yeah. But yeah, that's another that's plantation great. that we're going to explore because mm -hmm. I haven't been there. Wow. I'm always going to go that way as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a surreal.